G'day guys, this is Paul from Polyman Astro, and in today's video I'm going to compare Noise Exterminator to Topaz Denoise. I've seen a lot of videos on Noise Exterminator, but I don't think any of them have gone the detail that I'm going to go into today. Now I won't keep you in suspense, I think Noise Exterminator edges out Topaz Denoise, but I also don't think that's a surprise, and I don't think it's necessarily a negative on Topaz Denoise. Noise Exterminator has been designed purely for astrophotography, whereas Topaz Denoise, which has been around longer, is designed for photography in general. So it's for landscape photography, portrait photographers, low light photographers like us. Uh, it does all of that uh, and it does it quite well. I use it in my regular photography all the time but it shouldn't come as a surprise that a tool designed specifically for astrophotography does a better job at astrophotography. Now noise exterminator like Topaz Denoise is what they like to call an AI based tool. Now, it's been designed by RC Astro, Russell Crome in astrophotography, who you may be familiar with from his tools Gradient Exterminator and Star Exterminator. Now Star Exterminator and Noise Exterminator are available for Photoshop and PixInsight. They're paid processes. They're not free, but they come with a 30 day trial. And if you already own one of them, then you do get a discount. So before we go into too much depth, I'll give you a quick look at Noise Exterminator if you haven't seen it before. It's only got a few different options. It's nice and simple to use. So once you've asked for a free trial or you've purchased Noise Exterminator and installed it on your system, then you'll see it under Process All Processes Noise Exterminator. You'll also get a link to add a, an address to your managed repositories so that when you update picks inside in the future, you'll be able to keep it on your system. And also if Russell decides to update the AI, which he does periodically, you'll automatically get that update. So here is Noise Exterminator. You can see it's in four parts. The select AI, so you can select older AIs or the current AI if you'd like to. There's a denoise slider, there's a detail slider, and then there's a linear option. So just like Star Exterminator, you can use this on linear or non-linear data. And that tick box will allow the AI to realize that you're working on linear data versus non-linear, and it'll do things a little bit differently. The noise slider runs from zero to one and the idea is the AI is going to look at your image pixel by pixel and decide which pixels it thinks are noise and that slider is telling noise exterminator what percentage of those noise pixels to remove. So even though the AI identifies let's say a hundred thousand pixels it may not remove all of them depending on how aggressive you set this slider. So it'll allow you to keep a little bit of grain in your image which I personally like. I don't like it hundred percent smooth. And then the next slider deals with an issue with denoising all around not just these AI based denoises that they smooth the image out uh, and they'll smooth out the details. So this slider then allows the AI to decide basically like an unsharp mask. It'll look for differences in contrast and assume that they're edges and then it'll sharpen those edges. And again, this slider decides how aggressive that sharpening is. So that's Noise Exterminator in a nutshell. And as we run through this, I'm not saying that this is better than traditional noise reduction techniques, but it is far easier. You've only got a few sliders to deal with and a, a linear button to click. So now what I'm gonna do is go full atom block. I'm gonna go into quite a lot of detail with both Noise Exterminator and Topaz Denoise to try and come up with some optimal settings for the image I'm working with. Now the image I'm working with is a HA image of NGC 6188, the Dragons of Ara. And I did some very minimal processing on this. I did a dynamic background extraction. I did not do linear noise reduction like I normally do. I then removed the stars while the image was linear using Star Exterminator. And then I used GHS to run through a series of um, stretches to get it to this point. And then I did do a sneaky bit of pixel math because uh, this this shell around this nebula here is predominantly oxygen. So it didn't really show up in my HA. And since this is going to be the luminance image, I did a bit of pixel math to combine the oxygen for just where it was the brightest in this region here. Again, no nonlinear noise reduction and no nonlinear sharpening because I want Noise Exterminator and Topaz to do that. So what you can see up the top here are some process icons that I've created using Noise Exterminator. And they have all sorts of symbols on them, so I'll explain them. NX for Noise Exterminator, N for Noise Reduction and this is the percentage of the noise reduction on that slider. So if I open one up, for instance, you can see the detail slider's at zero. I'm just working on denoise, and it was at 60%. Whereas if I open the 80, it's at 80%. And I ran through those one at a time. Basically, it's just changing the noise reduction by 10% at a time until a full 100%. Now the default's 90%, but I wanted to see exactly where the sweet spot was gonna be for me. And I produced a series of images, and you can see those images down here. Okay, and we'll look at them shortly. Once I zeroed in on uh, an amount of noise reduction I wanted, I then did the same process with these icons over here, process icons over here, where I ran the detail slider from 10% through to 100%. And again, doing that one at a time produced 
these series of images here with my baseline noise reduction that I wanted, and then I could choose the level of detail I wanted. Now I will say that the level of detail here is gonna be dependent on whether you have stars or don't have stars. When I'm working on an image that has stars, I'll put the detail slider a lot lower than what I'm going to on this image. So let's open up a few images. I won't open all of them up. I'll open up the 20% here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in to the top left-hand corner. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because there is a dark patch of dust here where very little signal is coming into the sensor and there's the dragons here. So we'll nicely be able to see um, how the noise reduction works from dark uh, low light regions through to brighter regions and also see how it affects the sharpness of the dragons as we, as we increase that noise reduction. So if I bring the same view here, and then at 20%, I can notice a bit of difference, but not a huge amount of difference. Uh, there is a slight softening of the head of the dragon here I can notice, and there is a bit of noise. I can see a bit of noise reduction in the dark here. Uh, let's jump that to 50% now, and again, drag that comparison over. Okay, there's quite a significant difference in noise reduction now, even in this region over here, which was still a bit noisy in the previous one. Uh, and the dragons still look reasonably sharp. They, they, there hasn't been a drastic softening compared to the original here. Let's jump up to 80%, same view. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, this is this is definitely most of the, the grain and noise, and I guess there were res residual stars and so on from all artifacts from a star exterminator are pretty much gone. And the dragons still look reasonably sharp. And then 100%. And I can see, so I, I don't know how familiar you are with noise reduction, but you'll often see uh, it termed plasticky. Uh, when, when there's absolutely no noise left, when you've gone too excessive, the image starts to develop this weird, smooth, plasticky look, I guess you can call it. Uh, and it definitely has that look over here, the 100%. Um, now, in fact, I've looked at these very closely, and for me, for my eyes, the 50% is where I want things to be. I still want a bit of grain in the image, but not an excessive amount of grain, uh, and I don't want it to be too smooth. And I think that the 50% is exactly where I want it to be for how much noise it's reduced, particularly over here where the residual stars and artifacts and so on from Star Exterminator were present. I think it's done a decent job. So then what I did was... I took that 50% as my baseline, and then I started running through the details. And again, if I open this one up, so it's got the 50% noise reduction, and it's gonna start getting some sharpness, some unsharp masking happening to it. And you can't really notice much at 10%. So let's jump forwards to, let's say 50%. There is a bit of sharpening now, which is nice, but not excessive. Now, if I jump forward to 100%, you'll see that it really is excessive. There, there is too much noise reduction around here and if I zoom in maybe this level and compare it to the 100 you can see there's a lot of artifacts along these edges here it's over sharpened now compare that to the 50 percent and it should still look quite reasonable okay it it has sharpened but it's not excessive and that's how I want my noise reduction I want it and my sharpening I, I want it to have an effect but not so much that it stands out if you know what I mean uh, you have to really look to notice that anything's happened. And that's what I want. So the 50-50 the for me is, is exactly where I want things to be with Noise Exterminator. Then what I did was I did the same process with Topaz Denoise. The advantage Topaz Denoise has is that it has a, a real-time preview. So I can have the original and the uh, noise-reduced image side-by-side side and compare them in real-time. Uh, it also has two sliders, just like Noise Exterminator, one to deal with noise and one to deal with bringing back that detail that's been smoothed out. Because it's designed for photographers in general, it has multiple models as well. So I ran through the standard model and I also ran through the low light model. Starting with the standard model, I, I started at zero, zero, and I moved the, the noise slider up. And with Topaz Denoise, things happen very quickly. So I didn't have to move the noise slider up much at all, and it was already too excessive. So I zeroed in on seven for my noise reduction there. And then I started working on the detail slider, and again, it doesn't take much to move it, and it's over sharpening. So I didn't have to move it much at all. I think I moved it to 10 for the sharpening on it to produce an image. Then what I did was I bumped the, the sharpening right up to 100, just so that we can see the extreme end for it as well. 
I then jumped to the low light model, same process, started at zero, moved my noise up. And again, didn't have to move noise much. I think I, I moved it to 10 here. And then the detail slider ended up at 10 again as well. And the idea was to produce an image that was similar to the, the noise exterminator image so that we can compare them. And then I bumped the, the sharpening up to 100 again, just so we can see the extreme end. And here they are. So here's the standard model with uh, what I thought was decent uh, noise reduction and sharpening. And if I zoom that one in to that top right hand corner again, then I instantly notice uh, a significant difference. Let's zoom that out a bit so you can see a bit more between it and where I thought uh, noise reduction was decent in uh, Noise Exterminator. Now let's compare that to the, the Noise Exterminator image that I thought was decent. Here we go. And I'll, I'll zoom them to the same level. Now in, in this image, it is quite smooth here compared to over here. It is quite soft here compared to the dragons. Whereas in the noise exterminator image, the grain is consistent across the whole image and the sharpness is consistent across the whole image as well. And to me, that's important. And Topaz Denoise has failed on that. Okay, let's see if the same is true for the low light. So I'll move the low light over here. I'll bring back that 50-50 image and we can compare it. At this scale, they look pretty similar, I've got to say. Although noise exterminator has done a better job consistent wise here there's still some star exterminator issues over here. But if I zoom in on the low light in that dark region, then I'm gonna see an artifact. It should show up fairly clear as I zoom in. Um, it becomes quite, uh, maybe it's not gonna show up so well on YouTube, but there is a kind of grid-like pattern in the darker regions here and a blotchy kind of pattern here that doesn't really come across on the noise exterminator image. Sure, the noise exterminator image looks noisier, but it's consistent. Whereas here it's not. There's blotches and there's a grid-like pattern here that I really don't like. So again, noise exterminator wins out against low light as well. Now, let's look at the extremes. So if I open up the standard model extreme, this is where I put the detail to 100% and I zoom in on those dragons, then we're gonna see one of the major issues that Topaz Denoise has always had. You can see these where, where there's this massive contrast dif difference between dark and bright, it'll often put these wispy filamentary details in that just don't exist. Be careful watching this because from this point on, you're going to see this in APOD images, particularly from a year or two ago, all the time. Whereas if we look at the extreme model for noise exterminator, I'm not saying it's perfect by any means, it's still got issues, but it, it's not to the level of topaz. It hasn't in invented anywhere as near as much detail that doesn't exist as topaz does. So that's a shot in the foot for topaz right there in terms of what it produces. And it's completely unrealistic. I'm not saying the 100% here on noise exterminator is perfect. I wouldn't use it, but it, it's much more controlled than topaz denoise. So there we go. Comparison between noise exterminator and topaz denoise. I think noise exterminator edges out topaz denoise. As I said at the beginning, I'm not surprised because it is a tool designed just for astrophotography. But what I do think is vitally important between the two of them is that noise exterminator is much less aggressive on its sharpening and introducing artifacts than Topaz Denoise is. So if, if you're gonna use either of those tools, I highly recommend Noise Exterminator. That said, do I think Noise Exterminator is necessarily better than standard noise reduction techniques? I'm not convinced, but is it easier? Hell yes it is. It is so much easier to use, so much quicker to use. Will I be using it? Yes, definitely. Thanks for watching.